Good morning and welcome. This is Jolene with the Jewel Design. So this is my first series ever. We are going to do the whole uh, sepia mini hinged ringed um, journal, mini journal. So I started off with, um, as you see, I'm trimming up the tissue. I was trying to see if I can make any of the journal cards a little thicker, a little more stout. And I went ahead and tried to Maj Podge the back cover uh, with a little bit of tissue. One, to give it some texture. Um, trying to, I don't know, to see if I can make it any thicker. And it didn't quite work the way I was hoping. Um, it kept it, it sort of, I don't know, it just did some weird stuff. Um, so I am creating today, um, I created a bunch of stuff and then I was going to just sit here and talk over it, keep it simple to you guys so that it wasn't super long and drawn out, see where I was going with it. Um, that way there was any glitches too. We didn't lose anything too major. So we're starting with the back page, um, with the back of the book where we were talking about making that three pocket tiered, um, element on the back page. And I don't know why I ended up uh, putting tissue on that back end side because I didn't need to, but it did allow a little bit of extra fluff. Um, I shouldn't say fluff. I should say I'm trying to see if I can make it any more stout, make it a little more hard, like, you know, cardstock or a thin, you know, um, the really thin cardboard. And it didn't work all that great. So what I'm just, I'm just changing out my pad because I want to be able to use the distressed vintage um, photo all day and have a better handle to deal with it. So I definitely wanted to make sure as I was going along that I distressed everything because you so, you know, we want to have that really pretty antique look, which this this printout in the sepia definitely um, lends itself to the vintage photo, which is great. I was really happy about that. So I did distress cut the edges so that there was a little bit of a torn look to them so they weren't just flat across. Um, I had sort of wish I had waited a little longer though. I'm really impatient, like painting my nails and messing them up. Um, I should have waited for the card to dry a little more. I did take it and have it blow dry, blow dry it, but it wasn't quite dry enough. As you'll see throughout the video, um, it starts curling a little weird. <laughs> Lessons learned, right? We'll see. Now I started to glue across the bottom like I always do for a pocket, but when you're doing layers, you want it to go all the way through. So the bigger pieces can go all the way down, uh, say the back side. And each one just sort of has, you know, um, the ability to have something shorter as you go down to the bottom. So I make sure I not to, of course, glue the, the bottom, just the sides. I try to make sure to line them up so it looked like one continuous pocket. But then I goofed. I realized the bottom actually needed to be glued. <laughs> the bottom does need to be glued, otherwise everything falls out, right? But luckily I love this little skinny end to the um, glue because it the glitter glue has that skinny head and you can get in there. So started playing with, you know, the different cards and seeing what we had, what we were trying to decide upon. Um, trying to decide whether I'd make that card thinner because it seemed really big. Uh, being a loaded pocket though, we definitely, you know, whether the back page was going to stick up or not. Um, so I did decide to trim down. Yeah. Um, trim down this pocket to be a little narrower, or not pocket, uh, card to be a little more narrow and give you the torn all the way around, I think, except for the bottom. And um, that way you could still see some of the pocket decor and not completely cover it up. Hopefully through the most part, I, I noticed right off the bat, my camera did settle when we started, but it seems to be holding out. And for the most part, I try to stay, try to stay in frame. Um, I have a tendency working close to me and so I had to keep reminding myself, nope, to the middle of the, middle of the table, middle of the table. So you'll have to forgive me. This will be my first, uh, design as I go and sort of doing it one way and then showing you guys what I'm up to. So I, you know, I look at it a lot. I'm really debating. Um, most of it is doable. Um, if I decide at the end, I don't like it. I can pull it apart and thankfully I can just reprint it. Um, the joy of having digitals, you know, where you don't have to worry about ruining a vintage piece and going, oh my gosh, I can't, I'm, I'm done. I can't do anything about it. So um, I am stoked that these are digitals that I can reprint. If I just completely screw it up and learn from it, I can always redo it. So, all right. So that's where we were starting with what we're like, we're going to let it sort of dry out some um, and watch as it progresses, see how it all pans out.
so we'll give it a try, right? You see I'm playing with it quite a bit because I'm really debating on whether this is going to work, right? And it's still sort of damp, so um, I'm going to definitely have to, you know, debate on... Oh, sorry, yeah, my pads are bugging me. Yeah, the um the white what I put on across the top definitely bled the pink. Um you can't tell too bad here. It's a little whiter than the card originally started out as. So I just decided to stress a little bit over it to keep it very muted, very sepia, very antique. Um I still have the decoration to do on all these. We do work on about three different sides today. Um or three different pages today. Uh but um you know, I'm, I keep debating on what I'm doing and is it the, what, the right thing and, you know, debatable. So I decided that I was going to shift a little bit since the back pocket is tall enough. Um, I was going to go ahead and place a one of the tags, one of four tags. These are the medium sized tags within the sepia kit. Because remember, we decided to put the larger ones to the side. Um, I was going to put a medium tag down the back because I felt we needed... I don't know, more, more things in there. And it's okay that sticks out in the back because, um, you know, it's the back of it and it's nice to, it's fun to have things sticking out of your journal in different directions. I love the layering of that. So that would be your pages and that would stick out the back and we'll put something cute out of the hole once I find the right material. Um, so it's all frilly and sticking out. So, okay, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're still debating, but we'll let it dry over there while we work on other pieces. So on to the next two, right? This is the middle pages. Um, they'll be divided with, with other pieces in between. We are gonna make these this cute scallop stuff into pockets on the um, the three bunnies. We're gonna go on the first page and the other two. And I'm cutting off that extra white stuff that I had left just a little too much space in between. And they do look pretty nice when these are all um, de-stressed. You know, with the, with the vintage photo, it does fully and gives it some more character. I'm terrible. I like will use every last an ounce of ink on my sponge, which is not good for the sponges. Um, so we're debating on the back. That one is the least, like the lighter of the two colors. These were both very similar in color, so I figured I'd put them on the two bunnies. And then I was just trying to decide how I wanted to decorate it and which way did I want to decorate them because they are horizontal, and I'm putting them in a vertical layout. So, um, I just decided, yeah, I decided I was going to keep the bunny sort of on the outside for one, inside for the other, you know, little rotation. And the cute part is I believe their bunnies are on the other sides. Now, I had a brainstorm uh, the other night that instead of just putting a pocket and filling it, that there should be some more something on the back of the page, like behind the pocket. So if you took something out or if I didn't put anything in the pocket, there was still some detail and some decoration behind the pocket. As much as I love the background, there's not much to it, right? So, you know, that's a, photo, a loaded pocket, so it doesn't matter, but this one, a little something behind the card or the tag that you'd put in the pocket. I mean, yes, you decorate the pockets, but you gotta do those things. So I, I'm trying to figure out, you know, distress a piece of notebook paper, make it not so bright. That was the other problem. I noticed the paper was really bright compared to the rest of it. So it definitely stuck out, but not the way I was hoping for. I don't know what vision I had in my head, so I had a little bit of work. Only oh, downside is once you tear these things, you're sort of done. You're like, oh man. This is why we're definitely sped up, um, so you're not sitting here watching me strain through all of it. I see it, I don't see it, I work with it, I work with it, I don't work with it. I twist, I turn, I, ugh. I did a lot of this all day. <laughs> like, oh no, did I just rip something I didn't want to rip? So I start getting layers. I'm like, here, I'm sitting on a piece of tissue. Let's make this work, right? Let's see what we can do with it. Let's see if something else can be panned out. Like, what else can I do? <laughs> then I worked all funky, right? Yeah, then you rip holes that you don't expect to rip. You're like, oh man, come on. So I was trying to say, well, can I get that back in there? Or do I not get it in there? Here's where I maybe made a mistake. Um, the Maj Podge didn't work so well. The back, right? I was debating on the back, right? And so I went to go back. And I thought, well, I'll just sort of Maj Podge this on so the tissue goes through. I was hoping maybe it would, do, it would um, 
lessen the newness of the book page. And as it's drying, at first I thought, okay, it's not going to go through. It's all great. You know, but then as it's drying, I'm watching it pull up ink. <laughs> I'm watching the ink on the paper disappear. Like it wash out like you got it wet. Um, so that was pretty funny. So I'm getting to that point where I know it's wet and I really can't work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and go dry it. And then when I come back, um, we will continue to see what I can or can't do with it. So those are going in there. We're going to let that dry a little bit more. And I'm going to go dry this one off. All right, so I'm back. I put the blow dryer to it. Um, I'm watching the ink come up, which is not a, in the end, it's not bad. It has sort of this bluey white color to it and definitely gives me the contrast from the, from the pocket. So it's dry enough ish. So I'm distressing, of course, the card again, like I did the other ones. Cause I really want to keep that vintage sort of feel and look. Now I'm slowly noticing that the, where the paper is on the other side where it's Maj Podged is starting to pop through and like obviously pop through. I'm like, oh my goodness. Sort of lesson learned, right? But so I'm working on my glitter glue, which I love that I went ahead and put one of my, um, I bought a dangly pin for my glitter glue. And I put it through a knitting needle cushion and um, because I wanted to use my, my bangles, but I also want to, you know, protect my glitter glue. All right, so I know I still have to decorate it. Not sure what how I want to decorate it yet. Um, as you see, here's my jar of words. And I have more words. Oh, I have Christmas words off to the side. But these are my pink ones. These are my, like, rosy pink extra large ephemera words. Those are my ornate framed ones. I even have an everyday word one that I think I ended up pulling a couple times. Trying to decide what's going to fit. Where do I want to put it? Now, cutting these all out are sort of hard because I don't remember half the words I used, right? I do this. I create these things all the time. Now, that's part of my everyday kit. These blooms, majestic. They don't just have some color behind them, but no detail. Those are my everyday words in a couple different colors. I just, just couldn't decide. Do I want to keep it simple? Do I want to go ornate with it? Did I want to put the big frame around it? Which words did I want to use? Uh, my mom was smart. She got to a point with my words that she started cutting them out in columns and then putting them on the clips and so that she could sort of hang them so that she could look through the, the column of words real quick and then cut out like what she needed and she can just reclip them back on because leaving them in a jar of words is oh my gosh. Um, I will not do that for the next set of ones. I did that for my Christmas ones. I was smart. I kept them in columns. Even though they're in a jar, I can pull like a sheet of column words out and look at them and decide what, which ones do I have because I can't remember half the time which words I did in what style. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I want a word and I don't know what I did it with it. So as you can see, I am kind of like debating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Which one do I want? Which one works? Which one, you know, oh my gosh. I'm getting there slowly but surely. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I like that one. Okay. Which is funny. I don't even stick with that one over there. But I do like the idea of them cut out um, so that you have a little bit more ornate. You keep to that ornate feel, the curves, the decoration in its own way is another layer. So sitting here having fun distressing them because they're so small. Oh my goodness, right? My poor fingers. All right. So that actually works really well up there. I like it on its own. I go back and forth deciding between and put the word inspire near the bunny next to the bunny under the bunny so I pull some color which I'm still debating on even now by the time I'm done with the video like whether or not that's good because um, it's very bright green compared to everything else so I do try to distress it I try to like mute it down because it's super bright green it's not the avocado paper it's actually tissue paper um, for fall and in fall but I had it available and I was like oh, I wonder what this will do so I get to mute it down a little bit. I try to hide it. Decided to need some layering there. I couldn't decide whether I make it part of the of the bunny or whether I made it separate. Like, oh my goodness, I can't decide. I'm this bad with happy planners too. Like, I'm so glad someone came up with the idea of putting wax paper down so you can move your stickers around and not get them stuck to your paper before you were ready. Oh my goodness. So what I do with my journaling too, I lay it down, I lay it down, lay it down, and I'm really tempted to like, and the hard part is I have a tendency of leaving big old corners, big old chunks, 
It's which is hard to see anything, and um, because I'm afraid to cut anything down. I'm afraid if I cut it down, it's not right, and then I've got this tiny piece or this scrap somewhere. That is absolutely no use to me. <laughs> or you cut it and you go, man, I'm not using it. Now I have this little piece, and it could have been used for a bigger piece later, and so it, I have a hard time committing. Such a hard time committing. Ugh, I don't commit well. <laughs> I'm afraid to. I question my design. I question my design and I shouldn't. Most of the time I'm on it. I'm pretty good. I don't have a lot of experience though compared to a lot of you ladies who've been doing this for years or just even for the past year and I've got it down pat. I have only done a few journals and um, this is all, you know, trying to do one for my kit sort of from scratch in a different way is definitely new to me. So now I'm deciding. Um, I've got two words on, one on the background, one on the pocket. I feel I have to have one on the card. Now the frame though is actually highlighting um, the dictionary piece of the word bloom. And it took me a while to realize that, like why would I want to cover that up? But I try anyway, right? I'm sitting here looking for one of my everyday um, ephemeral words. Um, because there's no, or it's just a colored background, so I can cut around it tight, I can do just about anything with it, and I don't have to worry about, like, cutting off something really pretty or whatever. So I'm thinking, okay, well, let me try to see if I can get this to fit. And we're going to cut the word around it and, you know, just make it fit in the middle of the framework. So it is, it is a really pretty look, but that's where the reality hits me, that the word bloom is in there, in the dictionary page, and why would I want to cover that up? So that we'll maybe I'll put oil up high. But that didn't make any sense. So I'm like, why would I want to do that? So I'm going through, and then I realized, duh, I have a, in my pink ephemera, extra large ephemera word labels, that I had the word bloom. Like, why not, right? The word bloom should be on the card since it has to do with the fact that the dictionary page is showcasing the word bloom inside the frame. It's not readable, though, but um, that is what it is, which you see in the papers later you can see it in the kit paper the kits papers that the word bloom is what's going on so that light bulb turns on i'm so stoked i'm like okay let's give this a shot we'll cut it down we'll make it pretty we'll use some of my fun fussy cutting happy platter tricks and we will make this work a little bit better which i was really happy with it when it was all done I did like the fact that I stuck to the word bloom and it really makes a nice little addition to the card. Ta-da! Okay. So, this is definitely the pocket, the page and pocket of words. <laughs> and yes, it's getting worse on the on the front side. Uh, you can see the line. If for some reason right there, it seems to be folding weird. Not so much ripping, but it's getting this weird crease, and I have no clue how or why, because I'm not, don't feel I'm touching it. But I'm debating to see what else I want to decorate the pocket with, if I'm going to do anything else with it, but the back is starting to bug me, so I'm like, okay, we now have to see what the front page of this is going to look like. What can I do to cover that up, not make it so obvious? I pull out a paper towel roll of lace. Um, I've had a fair amount of fun ways to record, to like, not record, but to keep my supplies without it being like super messy or taking up a lot of space so i have a come to find out three different laces on this roll and this one is in probably one of my grandmother's um and it looks like it's flowers and and uh, grapes but i'm feeling like this corner of just randomness a little apple a little bit of you know mesh will help sort of cover and layer this corner and it, it goes quite a bit back and forth before I get to where I want. But it does work. Um, and that's when I realize I have, like, a really pretty white one behind it. <laughs> but it's very white. And that white's almost... And then that one is a little creamier. But for this one, there, because of the cream that's in it, it, the white it's still sort of white for the lace. So I take a moment, so sorry guys, and I realize that this lace I'm using right now, I don't use that often, so I'm going to put it to the bottom of my roll so I can see everything else, and um, I'm going to sort of quickly reorganize and debate about that too, but because it's too white, I'd have to sort of distress it, and that one has potential. Um, I do go back and look at that later, so we will revisit that, but I put that to the top where I can see it easier and not be so, you know, in the mess. So you do see a lot of my mess the whole time. But I'm working in a small area. 
But now there are more lace. There is more lace and pieces in this kit from piles of paragraphs. And I, but I think I was going to try to use the lace and stuff on either pages or on the pockets or even on the, on the um, tags. The tags still need some decoration. So I decided to stick to the lace I've got. Um, I keep going back to this. I keep checking it because I realize it's drying and it's starting to poof. <laughs> Luckily, it's going to be full of stuff, so I won't be that obvious later down the line. And it will definitely have some. Now, with those pink words, I do have vertical words within them. And so I was debating on that. I think my larger um, sayings were horizontal, so I wasn't sure about that. I was trying to see which words I had left that were vertical that may or may not go with it. I'm still debating on that one. Delightfully hopeful being Easter and spring is a good thing also. Uh, shiny, majestic, and forever I'm not so sure about. And so right now I'm definitely debating. Well, yeah, so I see the words. So I think, okay, well, the, the vertical will definitely have potential later. Maybe the word shine will look really good on that. So we'll we'll see what that end up, ends up becoming, right? All right, so I see something there. I keep putting the word to the top, hoping that the lace will sort of cover. And after a while, that distressed spot is not so bad. But I'm still debating on the word, so I haven't distressed it yet. Um, it is really pink. It's not so bad here, but it's really pink in person. And so I was going to use more of a barn red over the pink to sort of tone it down, match the, the maroon color in the card. Like, you know, so I'm still working on it. It's still drawing. I'm still debating because <laughs> it's just this indent. Oh my gosh, I'm just kicking myself. And I just can't decide. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm so indecisive. I end up following my gut and it comes out okay, but I'm, you know, still sitting here, still debating. So, okay, I'm going, nope, that's going to fit there. That's going to go there. And I keep deciding. Um, but I'm almost, almost where I want to be. And I have to keep in mind that as I'm filling stuff, I have to put two grommets in these pages. So, um, I keep playing with it and keep, you know, moving stuff around to make sure it's going to work, right? I don't know. That royal's going to go somewhere. I haven't decided where yet at this point, but in the back the back. Oh, I don't know. Right? The back. And that would be the page with the pocket on the inside when you flip it. So we are working it. And it's time to reassess and come back to see where the next page is going to be. All right. So I reassessed. I let things dry a little bit and um, took the dog for a walk and came back and I'm, it's still dry. It's getting better, but it's there. And it's, it's not good, not bad. It's always funny how my, my, so I pulled some stuff. As you can see, I sort of jumped the gun and I started a third page. Wow, my, my thing is moving. I'm so sorry about that. So I decided that I layer the inside of this pocket or the other pocket and I did not use the Mosh Podge this time. I just glued down stuff. And I've decided to commit. I'm going to get this page covered. I'm going to make sure it works. And for some reason, wow, my poor phone, my poor phone's moving quite a bit. Hmm. So sorry about that. It's not terrible. It's just a little bit up and down. I can't really stabilize that, but we'll make it work. So that's when I have the realization, though, that while I'm working on this, like I could move the lace, I could change directions, I could actually put the word over the crimped area. Oh, and I hope to God I'm not out off camera this whole time. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, hopefully I fix this. When I brought the camera back into place, I wonder if I'm out. I'm like off. I know I look and I think I do move it a little bit, but I'm trying to put one of my, um, I have a botanical garden, um, sticker sheet and on clear sticker paper that will allow me to put it on the card. <laughs> you can't see anything I'm doing. I am so sorry. There we go. I figured it out. Okay, the fun of it. So anyway, I'm adding this pretty green purple sticker um, that's sort of washed out on the bottom to help sort of blend the graphic up into my lace. Give it a, I don't know, just something to fill the space, I guess. The card's sort of doing weird things, right? 
Okay, so then I keep playing with the lace and I decide, nope, the word's going to go where the crease is. So it's going to cover it beautifully. And then I realize the lace is probably goes a certain way and I can't put it the way I want. So I come back to the, my original thought. But the word delightful, delightfully hopeful does cover the crease. Now, when the, right, the lace is just in the right spot, the crease isn't that bad. But um, I decide that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to cover it up to hopefully reinforce it. So there's a lot of goo. I'm using Fabric Fusion here. I don't have fabric tack, so that's another ooey gooey piece. But it'll keep where the applique part is pretty well down and a little bit of the mesh work when I can get it out. Ugh, darn bottles. All right, so then I'm going to use my ah, glitter glue. A lot of combination of, right? Hope it all sticks together. We'll find out in the morning. So I'm going to somewhat cover that, put it on the applique, on the lace, put it over where the line would be. Not bad, right? It's I'm trying to cover and fix my... Mm, I'm trying to squish out the extra goo. So it's getting somewhere. It definitely has texture. It definitely has some lay layers. Um, I'm still debating whether I'm going to put a tag there for the back of the book saying who it was made by, but it's super white. That's a sticker of mine. It's an oval from the um, Cottontail Planner sticker sheet. So I beige that up. I have nothing to write with. So I guess it's save, saving grace there because I can't decide whether to put that I made it or use it elsewhere. Now, I took that lace from earlier um, that was on the roll that I was showing off. And I'm trying to use it like I did the other one. So they're similar. A piece of lace over the card. Sort of bring a vertical aspect into the card. And um, shapes, I'm debating, do I need to find some kind of applique thing? Do I need to find something with more more texture? The word royal is sitting on a piece of lace off to the side. So I was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe the royal gets glued to the lace. The lace gets glued to the sticker. <laughs> maybe I'm going to layer it up. It is actually a little prettier in, in person than it is on the camera this time around. Um, I realize I'm probably off skelter altogether. So I pull out the piles of paragraph tag because I realize on the inside, even though I put layers um, on the background behind the pocket, I don't have anything at the moment really to put in that pocket. So I start working on the piles of paragraph. Um, I think we said May's uh, subscription and I'm trying to figure out if I can come up with something that I like, right? Which I'm partially off camera probably the whole time. So the whole bottom of that you cannot see. I'm sorry, guys. Come to find out, I really don't go very far with this. You're going to see me struggle. <laughs> Again, it's commitment issues. Seriously. So, okay, got to distress some stuff, right? This one's really white around the paper. And the picture is of a lady, which is fine. I do have ladies all dressed up in this packet, but it didn't quite have the same feel. So I'm constantly rearranging down and decide whether I'm keeping that in there. Some of these pieces are really white but not quite enough to cover the whole page, which I thought was sort of interesting. And I'm debating, because this is very cream and white, very cream and white, very much like, sort of the, like the checklist behind the bunny on the other one. I thought, well, they're all going together, so maybe it won't be so bad. A lighter tag that would go with the page that it's in. I try to pull the lace out, start laying it up. I go quite a ways on this. I probably should make this a little faster for you guys, but you get to see my dilemma and my layering techniques. It's not fun. Try and decide what to do with it. And then I have an epiphany. I'm like, wait, this is a cool mesh, sort of like a fishnet meshing uh, material that I see. I'll, I'll see things tied like this to make the tag tops on it. So I was really stoked about that. I have a feeling in the end, the piles of paragraphs is going to be like, I feel bad that it's not becoming a tag with all the stuff on it. I have a feeling it's going to be um, pulled apart and it's going to get, the materials are all going to get used elsewhere. Because as you see, all of a sudden I'm starting to create layers. And though it whites out a little bit here, it's sort of pretty behind the lace and behind that is a nice little cluster. So I pull the white pieces aside, the white, the white, the white, white, I put it away because I'm like, no, it's not working for me. I have all these other pieces, right? Maybe that goes up here, but then I feel like it's getting too heavy. So I put that lace up. I put that lace on the bottom. I 
I definitely struggle with this one. I just don't know what to do with it. Nothing speaks to me like it just fits. It just goes, no, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I go back and forth. Because I can see my pages. I see what they look like. I can see what the feel is. So maybe I'll put it on the top so when I cut it, you know, it has a nice little detail. But parts of this kit I had a hard time with. I see delicate and I see feminine and then I see a little more uh, grungy, a little a little more stout. And um, so I was having a hard time blending those two. So I'm trying to get some shape by putting some corners on the little picture to see if that makes it any better. But I just struggle with her. She just doesn't fit doesn't I don't feel her I just, just I don't get her I don't feel her in my poor project here I love piano paper but I always like it to show so I hate to cover it up too much again as you see I haven't cut anything because I'm afraid to commit <laughs> hmm. yeah I'm thinking a lot you guys get to see it a little bit sped up but I'm debating so I think well maybe it's a girl maybe if I get rid of the girl maybe it'll come together so I do grab the perfume bottle um, these are from the small mini ephemera pieces because it has that same feel as these pages the cream and the white um, so it definitely the page in the back then have a little bit more brings the white and the, brings all the colors together but then the top is still bugging me right that burlap is just too heavy it's too too much for me and so I put the try to put some lace back there again Oh my gosh, right? I'm one of those two that have a hard time like mixing patterns in like a living room or a bedroom. I'm terrible. I, I, I so adore people who can like blend solids with patterns and different patterns and stripes and um, I can't do it. I have the hardest time. I have, I have to really push myself outside my comfort zone to do that. So I'm still debating. I'm still just dressing out. I'm still trying to figure out what colors are going to fly. And I'm just struggling. I just cannot come up with a plan at this point. There's a button, which I get excited about. I'm looking at the example to see if I'm just like, maybe I need to copy what she did. Maybe I'm just making, I'm working too hard at this. I see the button, which would be cute. You no, know, the top of the tag. And yeah, it's just a constant. I'm, I do come up with a cute idea, which is great in the end. Um, see, that almost works, right? It is definitely debatable. I can't believe like I end this last part just struggling. But hopefully you will, you know, I thought, well, maybe I'll make it a top, like, ruffle. Right? Maybe make a ruffle out of it. But I just can't. Like I said, I can't commit. I have no clue what to do. I just all but give up. I'm just not meant to. And then I realized, too, that the tag is going to be definitely taller than the page. And... That isn't going to do me any good. So then I'm, I'm stacking to put it away. And I went, ooh, wait a minute. What about this? Wouldn't that just be a cute little, like, layering? Kind of and then I, well, I don't want to cover up the, paint, the, the music paper. So what if I put those aside? Don't want to do with any of that. Let's just layer all this away. I've tried and I give up. It's not working for me. But I have a potential. I have pieces, like I said. I think it's all going to get... In the end, it's going to be pulled out of this whole project, but not in one place. So I, I put it down the darker, and I have a feeling, I'm like, well, do I cut it? No, I'm not going to cut it yet, because I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it. You know, it could be down the side. It could be, a, could be anything, right? So it has potential, and I'm going to leave it alone. All right, so we're going to commit to this third page, and we're going to, uh, though I did not end up with a tag or anything to put in the pocket, I am going to finish decorating the page with the, that has the pocket on the other side. I'm using my tear cutter so that I have the ripped edges and distressing that corner pretty good because that's what is what you're going to see. I want to be able to see that distressed corner of writing and we're just going to sort of layer it up and make it very, um, I feel that this one's very feminine, very pale in color compared to some of the other pages with a lighter paper in the background and that's still very wet as I'm hoping it continues to dry well. I'm going to try to distress across the sticker a little bit just to keep it from sticking out too too far in any one direction. And hoping for the best, right? Okay, so let's glue this down and get this get this com completed, right? 
at least I can say in the first part, we will get three pages um, decorated. We have the back cover with the, you know, the multiple pockets. Uh, the loaded pocket back cover, we will have two middle pages or semi, like we'll, we'll spread them out, but they will get, um, these two bunnies will help divide the section into three, I guess. They'll be my dividers after my first section and dividers after my second section. So that there is a, what makes it four sections? Let's see, front to one, section to two, no, three sections. So yeah, these are my dividers for my, for my three sections. Uh, the oval is on my sticker paper from my Cottontail Happy Planner kit, which is fine. There's glue, there's stickers, there's lace, there's a little bit of everything. We'll see how it holds up by morning. Oh, almost put it upside down. Here we go. So there's that layering where it's royal on lace, sticker on lace, lace on paper, lace on page. Like I said, this one I did not do any Mod Podge on, so there's no weird weird anything going on with it um so this one is just layered on the inside of the pocket i put the word shine on there um and then i'm, I'm starting to debate you know what to put in where um so there's our pages all a little wet and damp so we'll definitely want to keep them going so the only thing i haven't done yet is my front cover that will be the pocket on the behind it i still have to decorate that but i think it's gonna be more cluster like a, a paper clip cluster um, whether I use the coins, whether I use uh, corrugated cardboard, I don't want to get too heavy with it because it is the front cover. But, and then I, was, I had that epiphany. I'm like, wait a minute, if I fold it and I put a paper clip in it and, you know, I, I glue it together, it could be a cute paper clip um, cluster um, on the front of the front page, on the front cover. So... We are slowly getting somewhere. Now, whether I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to do anything to the inside cover um, because it is the inside cover and it's just a pocket. Um, and I'm looking at the, I'm looking at these guys trying to decide what to do and I may steal the idea from uh, Vintage Paper Girl and um, turn those three tags into a notebook. Uh, open it up, put, some, put two pockets, one on each end, on each side. And put a little bit of paper in the middle as a notebook, um, notebook tag. Now I have those circles up there. Whether I hole punch them, I don't know yet. Um, I may cover them with stickers. I may cover them with clusters. I may cover them with beads. Maybe the front one may have another, you know, keep with that sort of uh, button ordeal. And uh, the other two may just be covered with. One's on the back, but you still want to cover it up, so if you flip it over, but maybe I'll cover them with flowers or butterflies or something, since we don't need a we don't need a hole punch them, and I'll make sure, like I'll double check, do I want to hole punch it as a notebook, or whether do I want to keep it just more of a tag with no hole punch in it. So I'm fixing my whites, because you don't really want to see them, and yeah, I may make this a double pocket um, notebook tag. And that could go in the front cover. Um, I'll put some weight to the front cover. Good, bad, I don't know. But it definitely gives me an opportunity to play with that. And it sticks out a little bit in the front, just like the tag sticks out a little bit in the back. So I have my duplicates going. I have my things that are starting to come together. And there you go. Three pages done. Um, and the front cover.